You're listening to the Weekly Wrap-Up on Sprott Money News. Well, greetings once again from Sprott Money News and SprottMoney.com. It's Friday, July the 14th, and this is your Weekly Wrap-Up. I'm your host, Craig Hemke, and joining us as usual this Friday is Eric Sprott. Eric, good morning. Hey, Craig, good morning. Great to be here. Uh, Some exciting things setting up here, so it should be fun. Yes, we have a lot to talk about, my friend, no doubt. And before we get started, just a reminder that these weekly wrap-up segments are brought to you by the good folks at Sprott Money. We deal with mints around the world to bring you the highest quality bullion and numismatics. Visit our site, SprottMoney.com, to shop now. All right, we had some economic news right out of the gate here on Friday, Eric, that probably deserves your commentary. Uh, Chairman Yellen was on Capitol Hill this week talking about, well, you know, we got this inflation isn't, we might have to really watch what we're doing here. Well, guess what? The CPI, the Consumer Price Index this morning, 0.0% actually missed expectations of just 0.1%. And then on top of that, retail sales were negative 0.2%. Versus an expectation of plus 0.2%. We've got GDP cuts coming. Eric, what do you make of all this? Well, you know, Craig, I say same old, same old. I mean, we've seen this coming. We've seen the car sales weakening. We've seen the home sales weakening. We read about the traffic in malls. Uh, we read about the restaurant sales. Now the retail sales. I mean, they're all and they're all weak and negative, okay? That's the most important thing. These aren't just weak. They're negative. So year over year, we're going backwards, and ultimately, it's got to come through in the numbers here. As you point out, GDP, I mean, they're going to be revising it down here. And, of course, I go back to, you know, the middle class is just getting hammered with inflation in things. That's not in the CPI, by the way. And most of it is in health care premiums and, and other things like rent and stuff like that. So I don't believe the CPI number anyway. I never have. Uh, and I, you just see this continual shrinkage of uh, income, even the... Uh, I think the wage growth uh, last week was de minimis. So, you know, there's no, there's no wage growth yet. There still is inflation, I was saying, that CPI number. And, and all the economic data, whether it's capital goods, uh, uh, durable goods, uh, they all keep going down. So, um, you know, that's just more of the same. In the face of this today, we're getting a nice bounce back in gold as we speak. We're about 1228, which is still nothing to write home about. But nonetheless, it looks to perhaps have turned and that cot structure seems to be backing up, backing that up. We've got, yeah. we'll get another one later today. But boy, the one from last week had a cot structure that looked a lot like early 2016 or late 2015. You watching that too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's been a stunning, stunning reversal. And the one thing that, that everyone should bear in mind. It's almost sickening to have to talk about it. But, uh, you know, for every buyer, there's a seller, right? And, of course, what's happened is they've uh, convinced the hedge funds somehow that gold is going down, and the commercials were the buyers. So they sit here and keep buying week after week after week after week, and they normally win. And they've massively reversed their position. And we're probably going to have a great caught report here because we had some nasty days uh, last week uh, post-caught report. So... I would imagine that, uh, boy, they've really cleaned everything out and, uh, and and changed their position dramatically, and then we are in a position for the metals to go up. And, of course, here we go. Maybe they might even be tipped off that Yellen was going to go sort of neutral or dovish. Uh, maybe they even kind of know that the retail sales are going to be crummy. And so they had to stage this four-week kind of decline to uh, to eradicate their short position, but they've certainly done it. And typically, that would indicate that metals are going higher. And if you believe that the banks always win in these paper markets, uh, just like late 2015, if the banks could transfer all the risk of being short onto the specs, onto the managed money, <laughs> then you've usually yeah. set up to have it go the right way that, that we want. And, you know, we hate, we hate the process we go through, but we have to uh, face the fact that they do win all the time. Or they, right. so far, they've won all the time, okay? And... Uh, yeah, oh, that, that reminds me, uh, there was this comment by um, Duffy, the uh, CEO of the CME, right. who was on a television program recently. I know you wrote about it on your website, uh, where he said, well, you know, really, gold should be at, I think he said, five or $6,000 when you look at all the things that are going on in the world. And, of course, people are speculating that, that of all people, he would know what goes on in, on the CME, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, COMEX and would realize that this, there's this huge imbalance and that the price has been manipulated and someday it's just going to explode, uh, of course, which is what a lot of us believe, that it's been, been held down 
for a long, long time. So those comments are interesting. People should probably go take a look at that interview. It's available on uh, various websites. And, and the timing of it, Eric, I mean, you've been on enough interviews. Uh, you know, you get a, a CEO of a major corporation like the CME Group. I mean, that's just not like random, you know, just, hey, let's just talk and uh, BS a little bit here on TV. He knew exactly what the questions were going to be, and he knew what his answers were going to be. It's unheard of in a way. I mean, I can hardly believe it almost be like Chairman Yellen saying that, right? Right, like, just about. Excuse me? He's, but he's even closer to the action, by the way. She can. She probably has the blinders on and doesn't, can't see what's happening. He sees it. He's the guy. He's the regulator, in fact. So anyway, I think it's very informative. I know you wrote about it, and I think it's something that uh, our listeners should uh, should take a listen to that interview. Yeah, I would imagine somebody, if you haven't seen it, just Google Terry Duffy CME Gold, and you'll probably find yeah. the video right away. Uh, all right, yeah. a couple of other things I want to ask you about, Eric. One, uh, here locally in North America, ever since that flash crash in gold back on June 26th, the GLD has uh, been rated for 25 metric tons. How about that? You think those two things are connected? Well, there's no doubt about it that people can mess around. Th thank God I think the GLD is really only a paper market. I doubt that really there's the 25 tons moved around, but they, they say it in order to facilitate crashes and things like that. But I think on the physical front, we have some uh, rather interesting things happen. And, of course, the most notable is uh, the fact that I India, in the month of uh, June, imported um, uh, 800 tons of silver. And now that's a lot of silver. That's an annualized, uh, call it uh, 10,000 tons. We only produce it with 27,000 tons. So that would be 40% of the silver market if it continued. Now, I'm not saying it's going to continue, but it's a very, very large number. The the gold number for June, it's funny. Uh, I hardly ever seem to get any real solid info out of India ahead of time. But the one thing I got was that, well, it looks like there'll be hardly any buying of gold in, in June. And some guy was estimated they'd do five tons in June. Well, they came in with 77 tons. They've now done 540 tons for the first six months, and I think the number last year for the full year was 650. So we're wow. well on our way here to getting a really, really significant number. And, you know, it could be up uh, three or 400 tons. And to, to put that in perspective, the gold market's about a 4,400-ton-a-year market. So if somebody comes in and buys an extra 400 tons, that's 10% of the market. That should have a uh, very stimulative effect on things. And the silver number's gigantic, too. And, uh, you know, for some reason, I don't know why India is buying all of a sudden. Maybe it's just the, the certainty of the excise tax or whatever, uh, but it looks good. And uh, one, of, you know, one only one other item I'll mention on, on the physical side is, well, first of all, a lot of the mint sales have been skyrocketing. Not the U.S. mint so much as the Perth mint, the Royal Canadian mint we've, that we've seen data on. And then I read today in the Harvey Organ blog that um, Canada is out of uh, 10 ounce and 100 ounce silver bars. Now, I haven't confirmed that, and I will try to confirm it today. It's a little pre opening hours here, so I can't confirm it yet. But uh, that would be a very interesting development because between the Indian buying, the silver sales of the Perth Mint, silver sales of undoubtedly the Royal Canadian Mint, and others, uh, the silver market's tightening up here with people responding to these. Uh, sharply lower prices. Yeah, I've heard some scuttlebutt as well, frankly, from a friend of mine who had visited a Swiss refinery and said that uh, they were delivering out <laughs> some bars that were still warm of silver. Uh, so we'll see. It uh, it definitely has a number of uh, issues coming together. But the again, obviously, the paper market still reigns. Uh, but at least on the plus yeah. side, this cot, uh, cot structure is starting to look better. Price seems to be turning. And sentiment maybe is turning in our favor, too. It's about, about as low as it could possibly be. That's usually a good sign as well. Yeah. One other thing, uh, well, a couple other things. Uh, the, um, the Spot Silver Trust is trading at a premium, I think, of 1.2% which is very unusual. It normally wouldn't have a percent uh, premium like that, but that's also sort of a sign of tightness mm -hmm. that uh, if somebody really needed silver, they can go in and buy shares of the Spot Silver Trust and redeem them for silver, believe it or not, and they might not even mind paying a 1% premium if they thought there was, truly was a shortage. So um, that's another sign in my mind that, uh, that things are tightening up here. Well, I tell you what, my friend, I think it's going to be very interesting to talk to you again next week, again, as it seems as if the battleship is turning once again and things might be moving in our favor. But for now, I think I'll give you the rest of the week off, and I will look forward to talking to you again next Friday. Great. All the best.
Have an enjoyable weekend. You too, my friend. And from all of us here at Sprott Money News and SprottMoney.com, thanks for listening and have a great weekend. It's got to come through in the numbers here. As you point out, GDP, I mean, they're going to be revising it down here. And, of course, I go back to, you know, the middle class is just getting hammered with inflation in things. That's not in the CPI, by the way. And most of it is in health care premiums and, and other things like rent and stuff like that. So I don't believe the CPI number anyway. I never have. Uh, and I, you just see this continual shrinkage of uh, income, even the... Uh, I think the wage growth uh, last week was de minimis. So, you know, there's no, there's no wage growth yet. There still is inflation, notwithstanding that CPI number. And, and all the economic data, whether it's capital goods, uh, uh, durable goods, uh, they all keep going down. So, um, you know, that's just more of the same. In the face of this today, we're getting a nice bounce back in gold as we speak. We're about 1228, which is still nothing to write home about. But nonetheless, it looks to perhaps have turned and that cot structure seems to be backing up, backing that up. We've got, yeah. we'll get another one later today. But boy, the one from last week had a cot structure that looked a lot like early 2016 or late 2015. You watching that too? Yeah, oh, yeah. it's been a stunning, stunning reversal. And the one thing that that everyone should bear in mind. It's almost sickening to have to talk about it. But, uh, you know, for every buyer, there's a seller, right? And, of course, what's happened is they've uh, convinced the hedge funds somehow that gold is going down, and the commercials were the buyers. So they sit here and keep buying week after week after week after week, and they normally win. And they've massively reversed their position. And we're probably going to have a great caught report here because we had some nasty days uh, last week, uh, post talking about, well, you know, we got to, this inflation isn't, we might have to really watch what we're doing here. Well, guess what? The CPI, the consumer price index this morning, 0.0% actually missed uh, expectations of just 0.1%. And then on top of that, retail sales were negative 0.2%. Versus an expectation of plus 0.2 percent. We've got GDP cuts coming. Eric, what do you make of all this? Well, you know, Craig, I say same old, same old. I mean, we've seen this coming. We've seen the car sales weakening. We've seen the home sales weakening. We read about the traffic in malls. Uh, we read about the restaurant sales. Now the retail sales. I mean, they're all and they're all weak and negative. Okay, that's the most important thing. These aren't just weak; they're negative. So year over year, we're going backwards. And all- You're listening to the Weekly Wrap-Up on Sprott Money News. Well, greetings once again from Sprott Money News and SprottMoney.com. It's Friday, July the 14th, and this is your Weekly Wrap-Up. I'm your host, Craig Hemke, and joining us as usual this Friday is Eric Sprott. Eric, good morning. Hey, Craig, good morning. Great to be here. Uh, some exciting things setting up here, so it should be fun. Yes, we have a lot to talk about, my friend, no doubt. And before we get started, just a reminder that these weekly wrap-up segments are brought to you by the good folks at Sprott Money. We deal with mints around the world to bring you the highest quality bullion and numismatics. Visit our site, SprottMoney.com, to shop now. All right, we had some economic news right out of the gate here on Friday, Eric, that probably deserves your commentary. Uh, Chairman Yellen was on Capitol Hill this week. Report. So I, I would imagine that, uh, boy, they've really cleaned everything out and... Uh, and then change their position dramatically, and then we are in a position for the metals to go up. And, of course, here we go. Maybe they might even be tipped off that Yellen was going to go sort of neutral or dovish. Uh, maybe they even kind of know that the retail sales are going to be crummy. And so they had to stage this four-week kind of decline to, uh, to eradicate their short position, but they've certainly done it. And typically, that would indicate that metals are going higher. And if you believe that the banks always win in these paper markets, uh, just like late 2015, if the banks could transfer all the risk of being short onto the specs, onto the managed money, <laughs> then you've usually yeah. set up to have it go the right way that, that we want. And, you know, we hate, we hate the process we go through, but we have... 